Hello everybody. In this chapter we will learn what are irradiance environment map, how they are calculated and how they are used in the scenes. So few things to understand before we take a deeper dive into the irradiance environment maps. Whenever we see any technique that involves environment map that means it's a image based rendering technique or it's an image based lighting technique also we will understand what is irradiance and in order to understand the irradiance we will understand radiance in one of the previous chapters we understood that light beam carries the particle and these particles are the packets of energy called as photons. So the radiance is the energy emitted per unit time in a given direction from a per unit area of an emitting surface. What does that mean is light is an emitting surface. So the amount of energy emitted per unit time in a given direction from a per unit area. Think of it as a very high wattage light and if the high wattage light emits heat, emits energy and if the light becomes bigger the amount of heat emitted increases and longer the light stays on the more energy is produced. So you can think of it in that sense as well. So the radiance is the energy emitted per unit time in a given direction from a per unit area. And in the similar way, the surface will receive this light energy. And the energy received per unit area is irradiance. So in this case, we are thinking of the light in the sense of energy. So now let's consider that we have nine different lights in the scene. And we have an object in the scene. So we have nine lights and one object in the scene. In order to calculate the diffuse lighting per fragment, we will have to run operations. And to calculate the diffuse lighting, what we have been doing is max 0 comma n dot L. N is the normal direction of the surface, L is the lighting direction. So the number of operations for calculating the fragment based diffuse reflection is equals to number of fragment of the surface and this is for a single light and then we will have to calculate max 0 comma n dot l for every single light in the scene so the number of operations become number of fragment multiplied by number of lights if we have to expand this calculation which is max 0 comma n dot l for multiple lights our final color of the fragment will be equals to max 0 comma n dot l1 the light one of the scene plus max 0 comma n dot l2 the light two of the scene similarly we keep on adding max 0 comma n dot L9, the ninth light of the scene, which can also be represented by the summation sign we saw in the previous chapters i is equals to 0 to n and max 0, comma n dot l i. So, this is the summation of n lights in the scene. So, as the number of lights keep on increasing in the scene, the number of operations to calculate the diffuse lighting will increase. And at a certain point, the number of operations will become so high that it will be difficult to calculate it in the real time by keeping a good frame rate. So we will have to perform certain optimizations in this process. So one optimization step that we can take is that we can store all the lights of the scene into a texture which we will call environment map. 
which will be an efficient way of storing the lighting information into a texture. So these nine lights will become the texel in our environment map. By doing this, we have stored the lights of the scene into a texture. And each texel represents the light in the scene. For now, we can consider texel as a pixel of the texture. So image is composed of pixels. When image data becomes the texture data in the memory, a sampled pixel of a texture is called as texel. For understanding it, you can think of it as a pixel of the texture. So these nine texels represent nine lights in the scene. So this way we have efficiently stored the lighting information. But still, we have not reduced the number of calculations to calculate the diffuse reflection. We will still have to do the same number of calculation because there are still nine lights in the scene. And for every fragment, we will have to do that many calculations. The only difference so far is that instead of reading the light in the scene, we will have to look for texel of the environment map to find out the lighting direction. But our goal is to save the number of operations. So one way of thinking is that we can use the light maps. We can bake all the lighting information of the scene onto a texture. We can pre-compute all the lighting calculation and bake into a texture and use that in our game. So all the UVs for this cube will go here and the UVs of the cone go here. So this will become our light map. If we think how the light maps are big, they are also big based on the calculation of n dot l. So the diffuse component of this light map will be calculated based on max zero comma n dot l. But when we have baked this information in the light map, our information is based on a certain normal and certain light direction. And as we have fixed both of those things in our light map, we cannot rotate or move the light in the scene or any object in the scene. So this is the disadvantage of the light map that everything has to be static in the scene. And as soon as the object rotates or changes, the pre-computed information of n dot l becomes invalid. So we will have to think in a different direction. We will think of a sphere at the center of the world. And every point of this sphere will have a normal. For this normal direction, what we will do is we will calculate n dot l for all the nine texels of the environment map. So for this normal direction, which is represented by n1, we will calculate max 0 comma n1 dot l1 plus max 0 comma n1 dot l2 plus up to max 0 comma n1 dot l9. So this way for this normal, we have calculated the effect of light for all the nine lights in the scene that are represented by nine texels in this environment map. The representation of equation becomes and this will give the final color of this point of the surface. And what we will do is we will create another environment map which will be our irradiance environment map. So this orange environment map will become our irradiance environment map. There is no information on this environment map yet, but we will store it one by one. So we have calculated the color for the normal one. The point on the irradiance environment map where the direction N1 hits the surface. So if this is the environment map, surrounding the object similar to our lighting environment map this normal direction hits this point of the environment map and that is where in the irradiance environment map we will store the color so at this point 
we will store the color. Step one is we will pick a normal of the surface. Second, we will calculate the color for that point of the surface by the contribution of nine different lights in the scene. And the third step is to store that color value at the point where normal direction hits the environment map or the irradiance environment map. So these three steps that we have done and we will repeat all these three steps for every possible normal of the surface. So we will repeat these steps for every possible normal of the surface. And for every single normal, wherever this normal direction hits the environment map, we will store the value here. So that is how we fill the complete irradiance map. And all this calculation that we are doing here, it's pre-computed calculation. So we don't do all this calculation during runtime. We pre-compute the calculation of diffuse, then we store it in the irradiance environment map. And this irradiance environment map will be used to calculate the final diffuse reflection in the scene. And how we will calculate the diffuse reflection in the scene during runtime, we will see now. So this is the environment map which we pre-calculated and different texels have different color values in it. And this is the environment map that we will use to calculate the diffuse reflection in the scene. So suppose we have brought this irradiance reflection map in the scene and we have placed a sphere or a cube in the scene. And every point of these surfaces will have the normal. And normal is a direction. And now we will have to calculate the diffuse reflection onto this surface. In order to do that, what we will do, this is just to understand what is going on because normal is a direction, it's not a position, we will place this normal at the center. Wherever this normal will hit the point of the irradiance environment map, we will read that color and we will apply to the surface. We remember that the only two variables in our diffuse reflection calculation is the direction of normal and the direction of light. So any surface that has the same normal direction will have the exact same diffuse reflection value. So similarly, this is the surface of the sphere and this is the normal direction. To understand it, we will put normal arrow at the center of the world and the point where it hits irradiance environment map, that value will be read and will be applied onto the surface. So this is how we read irradiance environment map. And in order to understand how we will find out which texel will be hit by a normal direction, there is a function called as text cube in the CG shader that takes two arguments. One, you supply the cube map that you are using. In this case, this will be our irradiance environment map. And second, the direction of the normal. And this function will give the color of the texel where the normal hits. So this is what irradiance environment map is. This is how we pre-compute and bake the map and we use it in our shader to calculate the diffuse reflection. So after understanding all of this, one thing comes in the mind. In the real world, if the object reaches closer to the light source, we see the brighter light which we see in the point and the area lights as well in the computer graphics based on the light attenuation. But how we will see that effect with the irradiance environment map? The answer to that question is that we will not see the effect of moving an object closer or farther to a light source because neither in our calculation of creating irradiance environment map nor in the calculation of reading irradiance environment map we have the distance as a variable. 
the only two variables that we have are the directions which are direction of normal and the direction of light and that is why the image based lighting or the irradiance environment map reflection map are all considered as infinitely away similar to the directional lights so so far we have talked about the theoretical concept of how to create a radiance environment map and how to read it and we have used the terms like read all possible normals which doesn't work when we write the code so we will have to specify a number that how many normals do we want to read how do we want to read them and where we want to bake them so let's take a look at the programmatic explanation of how to create the irradiance environment map so suppose we have to create irradiance map from a lighting environment map and the reason why we create irradiance environment map is because we pre-compute this map and the number of operations that we have to do in the runtime are a lot lesser than calculating the light in the real time so that was a quick overview of what we have already understood. So suppose we have to create an irradiance map and this irradiance